This columnette was donated to my people by the creator of peace and friendship. We are gathered here today to pray for peace in the world. For this reason, I offer it to you, brothers and sisters throughout the world. The columnette, the ceremonial peace pipe, is offered by a representative of American Indians, who is one of 63 representatives of Christian churches, ecclesiastical communities, and world religions, invited by John Paul II to Assisi in a gesture of openness to testify before the world, each according to his own beliefs, for peace. At the close of this historic day, recognizing the religious conscience of man, Shintoists, Hindus, Muslims, Jews, African traditionalists, Jains, Zoroastrians, Buddhists, Protestants, and Catholics appeared in turn on the platform in the lower square in front of the Basilica of St. Francis. They prayed, each in his own way, to God. This bold step by John Paul II or Uncula to the right of the Pope sit the heads of the Orthodox churches, the ancient Eastern churches, and the Protestant communions. To the Pope's left, the Dalai Lama and other non-Christians. From 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., in 12 places in the city, a prayer for peace is raised to the one and only God. During these two and a half hours, Assisi becomes a center of universal fraternity. This universal fraternity expresses itself not only in common prayer, but also in common ideas about the religious education of children. Religious leaders agree that no one can more effectively make sure that the light of faith is passed from generation to generation than parents. Thus, the duty to educate children in faith and the practice of religion belongs primarily to parents. They are the indispensable link in a chain that binds their children to God. This is how the town of St. Francis celebrated the religious sense of man on October 27, 1986, an Assisi whose ancient streets were traveled by a singular pilgrimage. At the end of the prayer meetings, members of the 12 groups proceed to the lower square of the basilica. John Paul II walks with Archbishop Methodius of the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople and with Robert Runcie, the Archbishop of Canterbury, primate of the Anglican Communion. The Pope walks as a pilgrim among pilgrims, silently, in pensive reflection, as he said soon after, on the path that humanity treads.
John Paul II goes to meet humanity. Each genuine prayer, says the Pope, is moved by the Holy Spirit, who is mysteriously present in the heart of every man, whether he is a Christian or not. John Paul II, aware of this mystery of unity, tells a world in need of the absolute how urgent and vital it is to reawaken man's religious conscience, whoever and wherever he may be. You are invested with an... The Pope took several opportunities during his trip to India in February 1986 to express his respect and consideration for the deep religious sense of the Indian people. He quoted the former president, Radhakrishnan, the new world of peace, freedom, and safety for all may only be created by those who are moved by great spiritual ideals. Man may only attain freedom when he holds in esteem and follows the spiritual vision. Upon his arrival in Delhi, Karl Wojtyla immediately paid homage to Mohandas Gandhi. India's great religious and political leader, who abhorred violence, but was murdered by a fanatic in 1948. In a garden on the right bank of the river Yamuna, which like the Ganges flows from the Himalayas, a square marble platform marks the spot where the body of the Mahatma was cremated. The Pope, barefoot, lays a wreath of flowers and kneels. Engraved on a memorial table in the garden are Gandhi's seven social sins. Politics without principles, wealth without toil, pleasure without conscience, wisdom without character, trade without morality, science without humanity, worship without sacrifice. After reading this teaching of Gandhi, the Pope exclaims, he was truly a great man. In the state of Tamil Nadu, Madras is in the south, facing Sri Lanka. According to tradition, the region was first evangelized by St. Thomas the Apostle. Here, John Paul applauds India for the priority it has always given to spiritual values. Before celebrating Mass on Madras Marina Beach, the Pope holds the most important meeting of his trip with representatives of non-Christian religions. Of India's almost 800 million people, 85% are Hindus, 11% are Muslims, and 2.6% are Christians, including 1.7% Catholics. So it is hardly surprising that many of the million people at Mass were non-Christians. <laughs> Hinduism is not a homogenous religion, but rather consists of different spiritual currents, some of which are of a religious nature. Strictly speaking, Hinduism is neither a religion nor a philosophy but rather a way of life by which one can attain spiritual salvation, a way to salvation that may or may not have religious elements. John Paul II first encountered Buddhism in May 1984, during his visit to Korea, Papua New Guinea, and Thailand. On May 10th in Bangkok, he paid homage to the 86-year-old Supreme Buddhist Patriarch, Vasaratana. A solemn meeting took place according to Oriental ritual at the Patriarch's residence. The barefoot Pope bowed to the elderly Buddhist leader, who received him sitting cross-legged in a small temple. The meeting consisted more of gestures and silences than of words. After an exchange of gifts, the two leaders engaged briefly in whispered conversation about common objectives, the good of humanity, and peace. With regard to Buddhism, Buddhists themselves prefer not to call it a religion 
because it is centered not on God or the divine, but rather on man. Through his strength alone, through meditation, man must find the way to salvation, that is, to the extinction of his desires and therefore freedom from suffering. Kalo Kalovi in Fijian means to be nominated honorary citizen. This honor is bestowed on John Paul II during the first part of a ceremony to welcome him to Suva, capital of the archipelago in the southwest Pacific. The Pope, as guest, is offered the tabua, or whale's tooth, three times. He will take it in his left hand, then hold the cord in his right. Sebu Sebu. This is the second part of the ceremony, which is observed by all in strict silence, broken only by the sound of rainfall on the grass. Ten men place a great yakono root before the Pope. The final part of the ceremony is the Yakona Vakaturaga. This rite takes place around a copper vessel into which the great chief pours water together with Yakona powder. The drink is offered to the Pope in a coconut shell. The Fiji Islands, which were discovered by Abel Tasman in 1643, were evangelized in the mid-19th century by Methodist missionaries. Today, half of the population are Christians, of whom 38% are Methodist and nearly 9% Catholic. The Pope is welcomed to Auckland, New Zealand by the Maori with another traditional ceremony. The Maori account for 8.5% of the population and are considered to be the authentic inhabitants of New Zealand, which they call Aotearoa. The Pope is received as the white heron of the lone flight, a divine messenger that can be seen only once in a lifetime, according to one myth. The Maori meeting ritual is based on respect for the health of the human being created by God. The ceremony ends with a hongi, the ritual salutation, in which the visitor and the host rub noses and shake hands. After the salutation, the Maori consider the Pope and his escort as one with the people and the land of Aotearoa. Seventy percent are Christians, mostly Anglicans and Presbyterians. In Indonesia, as in many African countries, the Pope was immersed in Islam. Of the more than 170 million inhabitants, 85% are Muslim, 6.3% are Protestant, and 2.9% are Catholic. Dialogue is not easy with regard to relations with other religions. In Jakarta, at a meeting with religious leaders, John Paul II states that of those rights to be protected, a special place should be reserved for the right of religious freedom. He goes on to say that while the church does not reject any element of other religions that is true and sacred, it is nevertheless the king of Morocco invited the pope to speak to 50,000 Muslims gathered for the Pan-Arabian Games and thereby created a unique opportunity to stitch up old wounds and open new doors. The Pope ran counter to the contentious Islam, which refuses to separate politics from faith, when he stated his conviction that religion is an element of harmony and peace, and when he observed that Jesus was an apostle. At 5 p.m. on April 13, 1986, the synagogue of Rome welcomed an exceptional visitor, John Paul II, pastor of the Universal Church. In a historic gesture, he went to the great temple on the banks of the Tiber to pay homage to the capital's Jewish community the most ancient of the diaspora, where he was welcomed with an embrace by Chief Rabbi Elio Toa. This visit was a turning point in the Church's relations with Jews. The Pope called acts of discrimination, unjustified restrictions on religious freedom, and repression of Jews' civil freedoms deeply deplorable at whatever time and by whatever person. 
quoting the words of the conciliar decree, Nostra Aetate. He then added amid applause, I repeat, by whatever person. More spontaneous applause came from the audience when, while explaining that the Christian religion has links with the Jewish religion that it does not have with any other, he said, you are our dearest brothers and, in a way one might say, our greatest brothers. John Paul II's main commitment is ecumenical. To the Second Vatican Council's impetus to foster the unification of all Christians, he responds with the strongest and most far-reaching actions aimed at repairing the deplorable thousand-year split with Christians of the East and the 500-year split with Protestants. John Paul II's ecumenical activities are most effective when he meets personally with religious leaders. On these occasions, other Christians can negotiate directly with the one whom they think the greatest obstacle to unity, the Pope, the Primate. On such occasions, many problems dissolve like snow in the sun, even if difficulties still exist. John Paul II was the first pope in history to meet with Lutherans. To do so, he traveled to the Scandinavian countries, the cradle of secularism and religious indifference. Whose citizens are Lutheran by birth, a pope is that of reuniting Catholicism with orthodoxy. He designated the brothers Cyril and Methodius, apostles of the Slavs and the spiritual bridges between Eastern and Western traditions, joint patron saints of Europe. As he wrote in Slavorum Apostoli, they reawaken in all Christians a great nostalgia for union. After the historic meeting with the Patriarch of Constantinople in the Fenara of Istanbul in November 1979, John Paul II celebrated Mass at St. Peter's on December 6, 1987, in the presence of Demetrius I. Together during Mass, they recited the Profession of Faith, the Creed of Nicaea and Constantinople, in the original Greek. Carol Wojtyla. Assisi, Italy. Residents try to rebuild their lives following a devastating 5.5 earthquake. Construction crews work to secure the crumbling framework of the world-renowned St. Francis Basilica and the priceless 13th century frescoes that line the fractured walls of the church's interior. Across town, citizens team with rescue workers in an attempt to stabilize their most cherished landmark, a 600-year-old bell tower. The quake has left the massive structure wobbling precariously atop the crumbling pillars. But just as workers are attaching support lines, a frightening rumble thunders from below. A violent aftershock shakes the village, sending the prized tower crashing to the street. Back at the basilica, the shockwaves strike. Terrified workers race for the door as the ceiling begins to collapse. You can see gigantic slabs of mortar and marble crash to the floor as the church is engulfed in a cloud of dust. Medical teams rush to the scene as the people inside struggle to free themselves from the rubble. Villagers will spend several months and millions of dollars recovering from this violent quake. Tragically, no amount of money can ever replace the precious works of art that were destroyed by nature's awesome fury.